In this rundown, I'm talking about the legend of Rosie Ruiz, the 1980 Boston Marathon winner who finished with the fastest recorded female time in Boston Marathon history. There was just one problem. She didn't run the race. This is the Old Dirty Boston Podcast. In 1980, a woman by the name of Rosie Ruiz crossed the finish line of the 84th Boston Marathon with a time of 2 hours, 31 minutes, and 56 seconds. Rosie had just recorded the fastest female time in Boston Marathon history, as well as the third fastest female time ever recorded in any marathon. Rosie had won the Boston Marathon. Normally, that celebration is shared by the other runners and applauded as an amazing accomplishment, but something wasn't right. Runners commented that they never saw Rosie pass them throughout the race. They pointed at her clothing with no signs of sweat stains or perspiration. The truth is, Rosie skipped about 25 miles of the race. She jumped back in for the last mile and crossed the finish line first. Rosie Ruiz was a cheater. So who was this lady? Where'd she come from? How'd she pull this plan off? And maybe, most importantly, why did she do it? Rosie M. Ruiz was a Cuban-American woman who moved to the U.S. at eight years old from Havana. After immigrating to the United States, Ruiz was separated from her mother and lived with her aunts, uncles, and cousins in Hollywood, Florida. In 1972, she graduated from South Broward High School and then attended Wayne State College in Nebraska. In late 1973, after periodic headaches and blackouts, she underwent surgery in Miami to remove a tangerine-sized tumor from her head. Five years later, a plastic plate was inserted into her skull. She graduated with a degree in music in 1977 and then moved to New York City. So maybe the tumor or the surgeries had something to do with why she was crazy? In 1979, Rosie qualified for the New York City Marathon and was credited with a time of two hours, 56 minutes, and 29 seconds. The 11th woman overall, enough for her to qualify for Boston. Ruiz's application for the NYC Marathon arrived after the cutoff date for the race, but she received special dispensation from the New York Road runners due to her claim that she was dying of brain cancer. She was not, to our knowledge, dying of brain cancer. She was lying. After the 1980 Boston Marathon, New York City Marathon officials investigated Ruiz's run and concluded that she did not run the entire course. So not only did she cheat in Boston, but she also cheated in New York. So on April 25th, 1980, she was retroactively disqualified from the New York City Marathon also. Now let's get to Boston. Pictures of Rosie Ruiz crossing the finish line that day show her collapsing, presumably from exhaustion, into the arms of race officials. However, suspicions mounted about Ruiz almost from the beginning. Men's winner Bill Rogers, who had just won his third straight Boston Marathon, said that Ruiz could not recall many things that most runners know by heart, things like intervals and splits. Other observers noticed that Ruiz was not panting or coated in sweat, and her thighs were less lean and muscular than you would expect for a world-class runner. That's a runner's way of saying that Rosie was a little thick, a little fat. That's how runners throw low-key shade. Rosie later released stress tests showing that her resting heart rate was around 76. Most female marathoners have a resting heart rate in the 50s. When asked by a reporter why she didn't seem fatigued after such a grueling race, Rosie said, I got up with a lot of energy this morning. Seriously, that's what she said. Some female competitors thought it was odd that when asked what she had noticed about the suburb of Wellesley while running through it, she did not mention the students of Wellesley College, who traditionally cheer loudly for the first female runners as they pass the campus. Most seriously, no other runners recalled seeing her pass them. She didn't appear in any pictures or video footage. Two Harvard students, John Faulkner and Sola Mahoney, actually saw Ruiz burst out of the crowd and onto Commonwealth Ave, about a half a mile from the finish line. Not long after that, her New York Marathon race fell under scrutiny. Freelance photographer Susan Marrow reported meeting Ruiz on the subway during the New York City Marathon. According to Marrow, she met Ruiz on the subway and together they walked a distance to the finish line. After Ruiz identified herself as an injured runner, she was escorted to a first aid station and volunteers marked her down as having completed the marathon. That's what qualified her for Boston. New York Marathon officials launched an investigation and they couldn't find any sign of Ruiz near the finish line. So on April 25th, based on this and some other evidence, the Games Committee of New York City retroactively disqualified Rosie Ruiz from the 1979 race. Later that week, the Boston Athletic Association disqualified Ruiz from the Boston Marathon too. So what happened to Rosie Ruiz? 
Hayes. Well, after Boston, her life kind of fell apart. In 1982, she spent a week in a New York jail before being placed on probation for stealing $60,000 in cash and checks from the Manhattan real estate company she worked for. She hit the road back to Southern Florida, but a year later, she was nabbed with two other men selling two kilos of cocaine to undercover agents at the Miami Airport Marriott. Will we ever have an ODB podcast that doesn't contain cocaine? The Miami Herald reported that Rosie was the middle woman, the arranger, the broker of the failed drug deal. She spent three weeks in jail, but again, she was placed on probation. As of 2000, Rosie maintained that she ran the entire 1980 Boston Marathon, which lends very strongly to the case that she was kind of crazy. However, an acquaintance, Steve Marrick, said that she admitted to him a few months after the race that she did cheat, recalling that, I jumped out of the crowd not knowing that the first woman had not gone by yet. Believe me, she was as shocked as anyone when she came in first. Rosie Ruiz died of cancer at age 66 on July 8, 2019. I feel like the world's a more tolerant place for liars and cheaters these days. We almost celebrate them. Donald Trump's the president. I wonder how Rosie Ruiz would fare if she pulled off this stunt in the 2020 Boston Marathon. She might end up with a reality show. Seriously. U.S. swim team Olympian Ryan Lochte said he was robbed at gunpoint at the Rio Games. And it was bullshit. And he has a reality show. Rosie Ruiz could have popped off on Instagram and been like the Catch Me Outside girl. She could have moved to LA and did coke. As a disclaimer, I don't know if the Catch Me Outside girl does coke. But we know that Rosie Ruiz did. Remember? She got busted selling two kilos of it in Florida. And that is just one of the reasons why I look back so fondly at Old Dirty Boston. To see more photos of Rosie Ruiz, check out olddirty.boston or on Instagram at Old Dirty Boston. This is the Old Dirty Boston Podcast.